go. Yeah, there's something in here. It's a new carpet. Get your boot. I invite the congregation to stand and face the back doors. <clears throat> In the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. <clears throat> Therefore, with all faith and all devotion, let us now commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and his eternal life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we ask that you sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ, the King in exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem at, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it, and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to him, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered them, just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it. And he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him as well as those following kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Today we begin the most solemn week for us as Christians, an opportunity to enter into and truly remember all the events of that first Holy Week. It's not a repeat of what happened 2,000 years ago, but it's a great commemoration of how we too are part of that journey. Throughout this Lenten journey, our theme has been the journey to the cross, and today is the fulfillment and the beginning of that journey to the cross. But it doesn't end there. It leads us also to the resurrection. And so now we'll have the procession of palms. What will happen is those in the front in this main section will come to the main aisle and come to the back. Those in the two side aisles, if you'll go to the window starting with the front pew and come around to the back, we ask that you please just take one palm per person so that we have enough for our 10.30 a.m. liturgy. Please join in singing our opening hymn, number 142. And we will sing the refrain two times every time. is he, oh blessed is he, who comes in the name of the Lord. To the 
son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice, daughter of Zion, to the one who brings great joy. Sing praise, children of Judah, for the Lord is close at hand. Hosanna. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Joy, so who are thirsting for the streams of living joy. Sing praise, children of Judah, for the Lord is close at hand. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in. To the son of David, oh blessed is he, oh blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice, all who are longing to be told the face of God. Sing praise, children of Judah, for the Lord is close at hand. To the son of David, oh blessed is he, oh blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David, oh blessed is he, oh blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice, all who are searching for the truth of holy life. Sing praise, children of Judah, for the Lord is close at hand. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in Son of David, oh blessed is he, oh blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice, all who are hoping for the reign of peace and love. Sing praise, children of Judah, for the Lord is close at hand. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice, all who are waiting for the dawn of heaven's light. Sing praise, children of Judah, for the Lord is close at hand. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in. Son of David, oh blessed is he, oh blessed.
blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Rejoice, all who are calling on the name of God on high. Sing praise, children of Judah, for the Lord is close at hand. Hosanna to the Son of David. Oh, blessed is he, oh, blessed is he who comes in the name of Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so to merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the children that would like to participate in the children's liturgy to come forward. So today is a pretty special day called what? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday, because you all got something in your hand, right? Palm branches. I invite you to go forth now and continue to break open the word. Go in peace. Go in peace. Listen to God's word. Listen to God's word. May his word find a place in your heart. May God's word find a place in your heart. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ears that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me, they mock me with parted lips, they wag their heads. He relied on the Lord, let him deliver him, let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me, 
A pack of evil doers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, be not far from me, O oh my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will praise your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear my Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Israel, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not fully, did not regard equality with God, something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not, not during, during the, the festival, festival for, for fear, fear that, that there, there may be a riot, riot among, among the, the people. people. When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon, the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfume oil costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. 
there were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room? Where may, I, where may I eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though... All should have their faith shaken. Mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will den deny me three times. But he vehement vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, 
for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, <clears throat> arrived accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away secretly. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you, teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young woman, excuse me, a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests in the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed Ones? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, what further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophecy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither, nor, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the court, outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later, the bystanders, bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter were, remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply. You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? 
See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, <clears throat> Then what do you want me to do with the man that you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas, Barabbas to them, and after had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, the King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lebesapathani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait. Let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed in his last. The veil of the sanctuary, sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. 
Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the Mary and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. With our solemn procession and with the reading of the Passion, we now enter into this holiest week of the year. For us as Christians, it truly is a time to reflect upon the great mystery of faith, the Paschal mystery, the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our theme throughout this Lenten season has been the journey to the cross, and today we know where that journey leads us. It leads us to the Passion. But that's not the end of the story. The end of the story is the fulfillment of our Easter sacraments and Easter celebrations. As you were told on Ash Wednesday, when you received your ashes, to turn away from sin and to be faithful to the gospel, entering into the disciplines of prayer, fasting, and giving of alms so that we too can be that representative and that witness of faith for others. By the display to my left, we again partnership with Waypoint Services, an opportunity to help carry the cross of many individuals, those that are just two paychecks away from homelessness, those that live on the streets, including last night in the cold of this weather. We reflected upon those that benefit from their child care services and those also that experience domestic violence. This is just one small way that we can be Simon, that we can come from the crowds and we too can help carry the cross. And so today, on this Palm Sunday, I know there's a lot of distractions in the world, including a little thing called March Madness. But let us not be distorted from what is truly important this coming week. Let us truly reflect upon the great gift of faith that Christ has given to us. Let us journey to the cross more faithfully. Let us truly be prepared to celebrate the Easter sacraments. Let us stand for the prayers of the faithful. We call to mind our needs, and we call to mind the needs of the children of God throughout the world. Our response will be, journey with us, O Lord. For the church, that our celebration of this holy week liturgies may renew and expand the faith of all Christians, we pray. Journey, journey with, with us, us, O Lord. Lord. That all elected officials may recognize the dignity of all life, especially those in war-torn nations and the most vulnerable, we pray. 
Journey with us, O Lord. For people of all faiths, celebrating the significance of this season in their traditions may come to a deeper understanding of God's love and forgiveness, we pray. Journey with us, O Lord. We pray in thanksgiving for the ministry of Waypoint Services. May the generosity we have shared impact the lives of others, we pray. Journey with us, O Lord. We pray for the organizations who benefit from our local area needs collection. May they continue to be the presence of Christ to others, we pray. Journey with us, O Lord. We pray in thanksgiving of God's healing powers. May he be with those who are sick and for those on hospice care. May they experience the peace of Christ, we pray. Journey with us, O Lord. We pray for those who have died. We also pray for Kitty Dolan, the intention of this Mass, we pray. Journey with us, O Lord for these prayers and for those that we continue to hold in the silence of our hearts. We ask them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in singing number 485, What Wondrous Love Is This? Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your loving mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It 
is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through who Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to who save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our salvation. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered in your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and then he broke the bread, and he gave it to all of his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. And then he gave the chalice to all of his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of our sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Ludmilla, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, with Thomas our Bishop, with the order of bishops all the clergy and the entire people that you have now gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have now summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children that are scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who invites us to enter into this Paschal mystery, the life, death, and resurrection of Christ himself. Blessed are those now called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please join in singing number 364, Take and Eat. 364.
I invite the children to come up for the children's bulletins and the hospitality administrators to take up the local area needs collection. Can you bring me the children's collection basket, please? Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to the hope of what we believe, so that by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you will call. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brad just wants you to know that there is still nine spaces left in the, uh, for the Chrism Mass. Uh, we have a bus chartered for about 50 people, and we'll be going to Timmermans afterwards. And so if you would like to join us, it's on Tuesday. They'll be leaving at 11.30 a.m. and returning after we have dinner at Tim Timmermans. And so if you're interested, please contact Brad immediately after Mass so that we get you signed up. Also, uh, we did do the anointing of the sick on Wednesday. For those that were not able to join us on Wednesday, if you would like to be anointed after Mass, I simply ask that you sit in this section right here. And after I dismiss the, other, uh, the rest of the community, I will come back and anoint whoever would like to be anointed this morning. It truly is a gift to have you here as we celebrate these Holy Day liturgies. A special thanks to the bell choir. They're going to be here at 1030 as well. So thank you for enhancing our liturgy today as well. <laughs> Thank you.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And please join me in, in our sending forth song number 155, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Okay, Donald, if you want to go with us, I'm fine. 